Welcome back to No Sticks, No Bricks. Let me show you what full-time RV life is all about. We got Clay and Maria from our Road Less Travel. Then we got Brian and Tina from Jones and the Go. We're gonna eat some chili, we're gonna have some drinks, we're gonna play some Mexican train. Welcome to Full Time RV Life. Wow, Indiana has provided some pretty amazing skies since we've been here, though. <laughs> it's been beautiful. Some yeah. Of the, the shots you got. Yeah, but we're ready to go. Today is pre travel day, a real travel day tomorrow. Yes. We gotta go to Chicago, though. Oh, yes. Why do we gotta go to Chicago? For one doctor's appointment for me. One VA appointment. They moved it from here to Chicago. No worries, we're gonna stay at a Harvest Host like 60 miles outside of Chicago because there's no way I'm towing large margin yeah. to Chicago. Jen will take the Jeep in for the appointment and then we'll link back up on the, on the way to Iowa. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready to get the heck out of here. <laughs> We're ready. All right, so this week we want to talk a little bit about RV security and what we do to stay secure on the road. For those of you that are new to the channel, Jennifer and I have been uh, full-time RVing for three years, a little yeah. over three years a now. Over three years. And uh, so there's a few things that we've learned definitely mm -hmm. since starting on the road to now, three years later. One of the first things we did is we installed an alarm system in this RV, and we actually ordered a Simply Safe alarm system. Simply save on home. While well, we were prepping to full time RV and Black Friday came around and we're still in our home, we're kind of just waiting. That's yep. when we ordered a bunch of stuff to take advantage of those Black Friday sales and then just stashed them away until we got our RV. Yep. And that also came with water sensors and temperature sensors and all kinds of stuff that's pretty cool. There's actually. <laughs> <laughs> what? Just, what are you giggling about? Giggling about the water sensor. They do work. They do work. They work really well because you, they've gone off a few times. For you though, who know? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, we've never had any water damage. Those sensors are very sensitive. They it are. doesn't take much to uh, set them off. And our system even came with a panic alarm, and that's actually right next to Jen's bed, right where she sleeps. That was loud. That's loud. <laughs> Somebody tries to break in and for some reason I'm not awake or I'm gone or whatever, she can just push that mm -hmm. button and this really loud <laughs> ass loud. alarm will go off. So that works pretty good too. Mm -hmm. Luckily we've never had to use it, um, but we man, just... did you all hear about that Missouri couple? Um, there was an elderly couple that was traveling through Nebraska off of I-80 and stopped at a rest area and some 22 year old kid i'll say tried to break into their rv i guess tried to steal their jeep or something not sure of all the details you can google it and get all the details in the end the man was stabbed to death inside his rv and as far as i understand the woman is still in critical condition yeah i don't i don't i don't know the story yeah it's uh it's been going around it's out there 
We also installed some cameras on the inside and the outside of our RV. So we can not only monitor it when we're away from the RV, but we can also, you know, capture any kind of evidence that we need mm -hmm. if someone tries to break into our RV or steal something from outside or, yep. or whatever the case may be. So it's a good peace of mind to have the cameras. And we are both retired military, so we're not going to say that we carry weapons in our RV because a lot of parks don't allow them. But let's just say... We believe in our Second Amendment, right? Yeah. <laughs> Another thing is um, my pepper spray. Yep. After the dog bite incident, um, I used to always leave it in the Jeep just in case, you know, I was out somewhere and somebody tried to steal the Jeep or... Right. Or do something, but now I carry it on my person. Also, when I'm out walking around or walking the dogs because of the dog attack. Not only that, but you just never know. Yeah, you definitely never know. Just like that couple in Missouri. I mean, they're just at a rest area. Just at a rest area. And there's sometimes that the dog get up in the middle of the night and I'm the one that takes them out, you know, 3 o'clock in the morning and it's dark and I need something to protect myself from some For crazy sure. person out there. Speaking of dog bite, how's the arm looking? Fine. This is a car. Any pain left? Or no, no is pain. Still... This is kind of like peeling. It's just my skin, I guess. I don't know. It's getting there. It is. It's, it's getting, getting there. there. Another thing we do is we try to research the area that we're going into and read the reviews about the park and stuff or talk to... We have friends that go places because sometimes those reviews are accurate. Oh, yeah. We should have listened to them when we went to Thousand Trails Las Vegas a couple years ago. Yep, because all the reviews were horrible. We ignored it and we went and then that's where we learned a very hard lesson. Well, we had our uh, e-bike stolen there. I'm sure that you guys have been following us for a while and know all about that. Yeah. But for you newbies, we had them locked up outside of our RV, covered, and they were stolen in broad daylight. Yeah. While we were sleeping, it was like 6 in the morning. We were only there for a week. And in the week we were there, our e-bikes were stolen, a car was stolen, <laughs> our neighbor's car got broke into, yeah. our other neighbor's Jeep was broke into, yeah. like every day. I mean, it was terrible. It was terrible. We won't ever stay there again. Nah. So lessons learned on that one. Now our bikes have alarms on them. We've got Apple AirTags on them. We've upgraded our locks to the kryptonite locks. Mm -hmm. Before it was just one of the cable locks yep. and they cut right through it. They actually use big bolt cutters to cut through that cable. And we know that because they left the bolt cutters at our site. <laughs> yeah, there was somebody walking their dog and saw what these guys were doing and and try to stop them and chase them down but yeah so they dropped their bag that was full of other stuff they had stolen throughout the night mm -hmm. and then um they left their bolt cutters so mm -hmm. it all got turned into the cops we got them on video as well and well they didn't do any good the cops gave it a whole week and then decided that they weren't going to pursue the case anymore so one of our loudest alarm systems that we have in this RV when it comes to RV security is our three dogs yeah this one especially yeah especially this one <laughs> Except when our e-bikes were stolen. They didn't make a peep. That was because they were in bed sleeping. <laughs> oh. To be fair, it was hot, so we had all the windows locked up and sealed tight, and the ACs were running, mm. the fans were on, so it was pretty loud, but still, these dogs bark at everything except an actual thief. <laughs> oh, they're useless. <laughs> Another thing we have um, by the front door is we actually have an old school billy club. Yeah. So in the event that, you know, someone does try to come in, there's something right there that we can grab and... Real quick. So something that probably is a little bit more obvious, but maybe not to some of you who grew up like I did out in the country where we never locked our doors. Mm -hmm. We always make sure that we lock the doors on this RV every single night, make sure our security lights are on. So we have the front cap lights and we got the bottom lights. Some of you out there are gonna complain about leaving the cap lights on. It's security for us as well as the underbelly lights keep rodents from getting in our yeah. rv we've only had one mouse in this rv and it was when we were at thousand trails in cottonwood arizona verde valley where they didn't allow any lights at night because of the stargazing which yeah. we completely understand we didn't have our lights on for the time we were there got mice yeah i would have to modify our system to disconnect the cap lights and the bottom lights they're integrated so there is no way to turn one on and one off unless i actually modified the switch mm -hmm. Which I may have to do. No, no one's ever but, complained though. No, we've never had any, anybody actually complain to us, but I have seen it online. But mm -hmm. we also put ours, dim them way down, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and we put them on like orange or red which are not as bright as like bright blue or or some of the other colors out mm -hmm. there so i'd say for the most part the last three years though we just really haven't had many issues mm -hmm. uh, besides getting our e-bikes stolen um i'd say 99.9 .9 of the rv parks are are secure and mm -hmm. it's like-minded people in the park it's definitely more often than not that you're taking care of each other as rvers mm -hmm. than you are trying to steal from each other yeah we don't really leave anything real valuable outside either so. no uh-uh we've heard of a lot of things getting stolen and um most of the time it's people that aren't staying in the park it's people from outside the park coming into the park to steal yep all right guys well we are excited to hit the road tomorrow and head yes. towards iowa to visit my mom and dad for a little while we're gonna hang out on the farm and do some mooch stocking yeah and then uh, head down to Branson area in Missouri and meet up with John and Donna from the Cottywapple Travelers. Yeah. And Rip's on the road. We're going to see them as well. And then uh, friends of ours that we were stationed with while we lived in Missouri yeah. back in 04 to 08. Golly, time went by yeah. fast. It's my best friend, so we're going to yeah. go spend some time with Hi, her. Hi, Sunny. Her and her, her new man. Yeah. So until next week, guys, safe travels.